Hi everybody, Hoover Left 32 here, and um, I'm here on the eve of the release of Malevolence, the Sword of Acronox on Steam. Um, and Alex has asked me to um, do a, a quick video, about 15 minutes in length, to go over the game um, for some of the newer players so they can get an idea of what to expect uh, and what to look forward to once they start playing. So we're going to start off here on the, on the main menu after you've loaded the game. Uh, we've got two options in the top corner here, which are quite important. We've got plain window. We've also got a low detail mode for anybody whose computers struggle with the high detail mode. Um, it's not fully finalised, it will improve. Um, but it's certainly, I, I tend to play in that mode, to be honest, because it's quite a bit quicker for my, my PC, but it's obviously up to yourselves. Um, with the high detail mode, there's options and configuration. Op um, as you load, When you load the game, you've got like a, a little loader through Steam and you can change settings in there and obviously that will improve over time with the game in early access I'm sure that will get better and better uh, we've also got the main menu here continue game is greyed out but that will appear when you've got a saved game new game obviously starts a new game the credits to find out who made the game and quit to quit the game and the final thing we've got on here is I need help which is a little section um, which tells you a little bit about Acronox and what to expect and it's quite useful to have a quick look through and see if um because uh, I give you a bit more background information but I'm going to try and do that myself anyway so let's um we'll get started with a brand new game so we we'll click on new game and the first thing you need to do when you get when you're creating a hero is to select whether it's male or female and there's portraits for both okay so let's have a whiz through I'm going to select my character I normally select which is this one. I've also got voice packs at the bottom here and they're quite funny, quite entertaining little um, snippets. Uh, let's go for this one I think and then click begin and then we need to name our hero. Now you've got a generate option which generates a random name but for my case here I'm going to just call it Hoverlay You've also got an option for permadeath, which for all you roguelike fans out there just means that you've basically dead is dead, which is by far the best way to play the game. Um, although it can be a little bit unforgiving, which is the nature of malevolence anyway. So we'll put that on. And we've also got a reset achievements. So if you're playing the game through Steam, there's two ways the achievements work. You can either leave them on so that all characters gradually get achievements, so your achievements overall are for all your characters or if you want to you can reset them for your particular character so people can see just how your current character is doing um, so it tells the individual how you want to do it and once we've done this click on the start option here and it'll run through a little um, background story which I'm not going to go through um, for this startup video okay well here we are in the land of Acronox uh, procedurally generated RPG world and this is where everyone starts by the standing stones and in front of us got this weird looking little character here and his name is Al Aix which is a play on <laughs> the name of Alex the guy who's um, developed this game so what do you do now? well I'll quickly go over the um, interface here we've got on the re left hand side down the bottom here we've got a red bar and a um, blue bar the red bar is your health the blue bar is your mana in the middle here we've got gems and these gems will light up when various things happen in game I'll explain those as they come as they actually become active on the right hand side we've got character you click on character it tells you about your character so it tells you what level you are a little bar fills up to tell you when you're going to get to the next level what your current armor value is how much damage the current weapon need does and also in-game achievements which aren't steam achievements um, but they're also quite nice to see and at the bottom here we've got our attributes which actually change dynamically based on what you do in game so if you're a warrior you do a, and it's a lot of combat your strength improves if you're a wizard you cast lots of spells your intelligence and wisdom will improve um, if you buy and sell lots of things your charisma will improve and everything balances out um, so that's quite a cool concept Okay, so let's go back into game. We've also got a spell book, which is currently empty. 
we've got our inventory and in here we've got our potions at the top here red for health, blue for mana so that works quite well so this is a spell book for healing word which is a very important spell to go for right at the beginning of the game so let's access that there we go got a pie to eat if we get hungry some other tasty food scraps here torches very very important Um, in the dungeons, I tend to play the game with a very low gamma level, which is um, zero, <laughs> to be honest, and it makes the dungeons much more atmospheric. We've also got armour here with arrows pointing upwards. What that means is they're better than what we're currently wearing. As you can see, we've got a leather jerking on. So I'm just going to click on those to equip them. Start off with gloves, boots and a helmet, just to give you that little bit of a help at the beginning of the game. You don't need to, if you want to be really hardcore, you can set off without doing that. Got a sort option that allows you to sort the inventory out. And down the bottom here we'll have gold, which we haven't got any of yet. Uh, WT, what's the WT? Not too sure that one is. <laughs> I played this game for all this time, I don't know what, what WT is. Maps. Okay, so we've got three maps. This is our first map which is the immediate the arrow denotes where we are where we are excuse me and we've also got you can see the stone circle and obviously the trees quite clearly the local map is zoomed out a bit more so if you look just here on this little this square here that red square is actually this square <laughs> so it gives you an idea of the scale we're looking at here the green areas are grassland the um, brown areas are a desert, not, not a nice place to go, and the white areas are like snowy and arctic type conditions. And then the final map we've got is the world. Now the world is infinite, and we're actually here, where this little red dot is, which is actually more or less the centre, looking at it. At the top we've got coordinates, um, and as you set off into the world you can disappear off anywhere you want. There's dungeons and all sorts to explore, which you'll find shortly. So that's the maps. Um, quests. We don't have any yet, but that's the quest screen, which I'll show you when we get to some quests. And the cast option, which is just to cast a spell. The shortcut for that is your spacebar, which is useful to remember. So the first thing you need to do as soon as you get into game is to speak to Alex. So let's go on a quick word. Yes. So we click on him. And the dialogue system in the game is based on numbers. There are, it's probably going to change at some point in the future. Um, it may well be changing in the, um, the Steam release, I'm not too sure. But for now, we've got numbers, so I won't read all what he's telling us. But basically, what the options here are stay here and adventure in this area, which is the new. It's a newbie area, I suppose you would call it, because everybody starts off here. Or do what you will, and what that will do is randomly send you off somewhere, um, which certainly for more experienced players is a good thing, but not for the new ones. So I would, ex I would recommend staying here. So we'll select one, stay here. It then tells you a little bit about the world, and it, and it gives you a little quest, which is actually to reach a city called Edia Annex Holdfast, which is to the south of here. So press enter and then you also get an option to give you a starting item so we've got six options we've got the blade which is the warrior starting item so you get a random degenerated weapon the shield which is the paladin starting item which is a randomly generated piece of armor the candle which is the mage starting item which I think off the top of my head is spell scrolls and spell books um, which can be useful if you want to start as a mage the key is the rogue starting item, so you start with um, trap locks and things like that, so you're, you're better at disarming the traps in the game. And then we've also got the option of the coin, which is a bag of gold coins, to give you some money so you can equip yourself however you feel. There's no, there's no actual character classes in the game, but dependent on how you play it and what, what gear you use, that sort of denotes the character class you're playing. And then we've got I need no help clergyman, no starting item. So for the hardcore guys out there, or gang gals, you can start with 
just what you've got to start with and no goal either so you're on your own just go out there and do what you can so I'm going to start with the warrior the blade and there we are new item added and we can say enter to say goodbye now that noise was this quest we just received so we can look at that by pressing N on the keyboard or selecting quest and here we go get to edge annex hold fast so when I woke I was within a henge being stared at by a cloaked man by the name of clergyman Al Ayix. He told me that my first journey should be to Edge Annix Holdfast to begin my quest. This quest is a pilgrimage, it's very easy and we haven't fulfilled it as yet. So if we close this quest log and bring up the map, the local map would be the best one to look at and get to it. There we go. So now we can see that's where we are and that's where Edge Annix Holdfast is to the south. So that's where we've got to head. So we'll turn south. And we're off. Now what you'll find at Malevolence, you'll reach borders. You can see a little mini-map in the top corner. A little red line. Now because the world's infinite, obviously our computers aren't infinite. So the amount of data that has to be stored has got to be quite small, unfortunately. What this means is when you come across a, a red line, when you walk past the red line, you get a slight pause while it loads the world segment. It's not long, um, and it's something which will, I would guess, be optimised more in the future. But it's definitely something to be aware of. And also, I don't know if you can see, but there's an arrow now appeared. It's just a slightly longer one because it's loading a bit more information. My computer, as I say, I tend to play it on the lower detail because it's just that little bit slow at times. But yeah, we've got an arrow which is telling us where the um, the quest is. And we've also got the gem in the bottom that lit up. You can see the gem, the purple gem, down the bottom here. Now that's telling us that there's a dungeon nearby. And there is. Here we go. we found the very first dungeon that most people will probably find of Shobador. This was randomly generated when the game was first released. All, all, all the world was first put together. And we all know Shobano quite well. Now what you'll find when you get to dungeons like this, you'll find the, these pots on the floor. If you click on them, hopefully we'll get some bits and bobs. A bit, a bit of gold from that one. It's a graveyard here. And what are we going to get from this one? So have a look. Ooh, an apple, some gold, and a mana potion. So yeah, it's, it's useful to, to wander around the countryside. There's various things to find. I'm going to hopefully be able to show you how that works. But I thought what we'll do before we go to Edge Annex, I'll quickly show you the dun one of the dungeons. So we're going to Shobanor. Okay, here we are. Shobanor. Now one thing I would suggest is F5 on the keyboard is a save. So it's just, it's just saving quite frequently. Especially with the early access status of the game, uh, there is actually a, um, a tool to recover from any crashes, which works very, very well. But if you don't save, it won't. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it's quite dark. So if I use the, mouse, the right mouse button, which I forgot to mention, I can look right the way around. There's not a lot to see here. So what we'll need to do is light our torch. So we've got three torches. So if we click on the torch, it'll light the torch, and hopefully we'll be able to see a little bit better. There we are. You can see it's quite effective, the lighting on the torch. Now if I step forward, turn around and look up, that's where we came in. And you can see a little mini-map in the top corner. If you press M on the keyboard, you get a good size map of floor one. Of, so we're shoving on floor one of the dungeon. Dungeons can have up to ten floors. Um, all depends on um, well, how difficult that particular dungeon is going to be. This one I know has ten floors and um, it's quite challenging to get to the bottom. So yeah, we can see the U on the map telling us that's how we get back out of here. So let's have a look. I can hear a monster somewhere. The gems at the bottom are very important in dungeons. The red one would tell us if there's a secret door in the vicinity. The green one would tell us if there's a monster. So as soon as you get within a certain distance of a monster, that lights up. What that means is the monster you, you you're aware of the monster and the monster's not necessarily aware of you. 
but the monsters are quite intelligent. So if you hang around too long with the green gem lit, they'll come and get you. So what you sometimes I need to do is to, if the green gem lights stop, take a step back and you might find you can survive a little bit longer. And the final very, very important one is your purple gem. What this one tells us is, is the traps. And traps are deadly. Certainly pit traps. Anybody who's plays Malevolence knows all about pit traps. So, let's have a quick look. I think we'll head this direction. And there we go. The green gem's lit up, which means there's a monster in the area. Okay, so let's go back. It's gone off again, so... That means the monster's here. But not aware of us, so let's try going this direction. It could even mean the monster's through the wall. Because it does pick up through the wall sometimes. Exploring these dungeons can be extremely eerie, but also extremely rewarding. Certainly early on in the game, uh, we found the downward staircase here, which leads us down to the next level. It's quite useful, little tip, um, it, to go down the ladder if you find one. Because what that will do, it will set the level of the dungeon the, of the floor below. So if I went down there now, it would set it to level 1, which is my current character level. Um, what that means is if we level up to level 2 on this floor, or any time in the game, that dungeon level would be a little bit easier for us to deal with. I've got a monster somewhere about. Don't know where. Let's hope it's nothing too big. I think it's around the corner. Is that something there? Oh, it could be a chest actually. Yes! <laughs> I love chests. Let's see what's in here. Chests are always, well, saying that, more normal. Oh, a dragon idol. The number of times I've, I've searched in this game, and I always get surprised. I don't remember very, getting one of those before. Yes, it's a turn based game, so you're not in any rush. It's not like, oh my god, something's going to come and get me. There he is. It's an imp. These boxes, you just smash them with your sword. Sometimes take a few hits. That, that imp can't do anything at the moment, he's stuck behind the box. There we are, we've got the box. The little bit of lag you're seeing is probably due to recording software, actually. Now, if there's anything in the box, you'll find wood on the floor, and you'll be able to get to grab that wood, and um, click, click on the wood, and you'll be able to get loot. But we've got an imp attacking us now. Combine the game, pretty straightforward. Click on the monster. And he'll tap back. Ouch. You can see that my health went down just a slither. Not by much, luckily, so he's not too tough. Monsters in the game, you've got imps and goblins, which are pretty straightforward uh, to get rid of. You've then got the... Um, what's after that, let me think. Zombies. Now, the problem with zombies, they can cause poisoning, which means when you're actually... Um, in combat, that can be a quite a, a problem because for each turn you're poisoned, your health is reduced. Uh, what else have we got then? We've got orcs and lizard men, which I absolutely hate because they're the sort of next level up, really. And a level one character can quite quickly die to one of those. And then at the top tier, we've got minotaurs and ogres. Um, ogres hit hard um, but aren't very accurate. Minotaurs are more accurate and um, I think the ogres take more damage as well. They're all nasty anyway. And killing the monster gets you experience points, which you can then use to level your character up. This imp's pretty tough. I missed him that time. It's like fighting in slow motion because I'm running on the high, high settings and this. Recording software doesn't really like it. Ouch. So you sort of see and it's a bit like, um... Ooh, critical hit. With a critical hit, the monster drops back. Now this is quite useful if, you've, if you're if you struggling in combat. If you do a critical hit, it's a chance to get away. But for our intents, what it gives us is a free hit. And we've killed the nasty demon. There we go. Well, arrows and a hell of a lot of gold and another imp. Now I'm not going to go to the other imp, I'm going to get out of here. Quite careful, I don't see any traps. What will happen when there's, when there's a monster about and you're escaping? 
again turn base it'll, it'll, it will follow you if it spotted you and I would recommend on the early levels if you come across minotaurs or ogres I would run they're very difficult to fight early on because you don't have the gear that you need okay so let's leave the dungeon